occupation in the scripture selections. For example, in the reading from Genesis, we hear the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And in this story, God tells the couple that they may eat the delicious fruit from any tree in the garden except for one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A serpent comes along and tempts Eve to eat the forbidden fruit, and she does. Then she gives Adam some of the fruit, and he eats it. As a result of this sin, they suffer negative consequences that have been passed down through the generations to us. In the Gospel reading, we hear a story about the devil tempting Jesus in the desert. The devil promises Jesus food, power, and riches. Jesus, however, rebukes the devil three times, each time quoting sacred scripture. Now, temptation is a wonderful topic to explore, for each one of us experiences it in our daily lives. It is especially good to focus on at the beginning of Lent, for Lent is the season of the year when we are called in a special way to examine our spiritual lives in greater detail. Temptation, as we are discussing it, is the desire to do something that we enjoy immediately or in the short term, but that we will probably regret later. The kinds of regret, regrets that we may have may occur in any of our life realms, realms such as health, finance, legal, social, psychological, including guilt, and others. Humans, though they are not the only ones who dis are not the only ones to discover that short-term joy can lead to long-term regret. Take, for example, insects and the sundew plant. Sundews are beautiful plants that have small round leaves fringed with hairs that glisten with bright drops of liquid. Some say that the drops of liquid look like the morning dew, which is probably how the plants got their name the sundews have pink, white, and red blossoms, which are quite beautiful and harmless. The leaves of the sundew, however, are deadly for members of the insect world. The shiny moisture on the leaves is very sticky, so when an insect lands on the leaves, it gets stuck as the insect, insect tries to free itself from the leaf, the vibrations call the leaf to close tightly around it. Soon the sundew plant has eaten the insect, and that is why sundews are called carnivorous plants. Though this plant is dangerous to insects, it is not dangerous to us since it has been used since at least the 12th century around the world as a medicinal herb. In fact, even today, in ingredients from the sundew plant are used in hundreds of medicines that treat sunburn, toothaches, coughs, and other things. We can all learn some important lessons from the sundew plant. First, something can be very attractive, yet dangerous. Second, a thing can have many good qualities, yet have bad qualities at the same time. And third, some things are dangerous only to certain beings and not others. Humans, fortunately, are blessed by God with a brain designed to learn about the world and discern what is good for them and what is bad for them. Our minds, especially as we are able to look at the long-term effects of our actions or inactions. Thus, temptations are not in themselves harmful. Rather, giving into them is what causes the problems. For simplicity's sake, I think it is helpful to look at temptations 
in terms of people, places, and things that can cause us trouble. The first way to fight temptation is to avoid or at least reduce contact with people who are harmful to us. Certain people, for example, seem to bring out the worst in us. They know exactly how to push our buttons. When we are around such people, we find ourselves getting angry and acting in uncharitable ways. Others encourage us to gossip about others. Some are so negative about life that just being around them makes us feel sad. And others encourage us to do things that are not in harmony with our value system. The second way to combat temptation is to avoid places where we are likely to get into trouble. There is a good reason, for example, why meetings of Alcoholics Anonymous are not held in bars or taverns, why meetings of Overeaters Anonymous are not held in bakeries, why meetings of Gamblers Anonymous aren't held at racetracks or casinos, and why meetings of Spendaholics Anonymous aren't held in malls. Sometimes, though, we must go to places that could cause problems for us. In this case, we must take special, sensible precautions. For example, if one has an overeating problem, that person should eat before growing, going to the grocery store so they're not hungry in the store and to stick to a list of items that they made before they went to the store. And finally, there may be things that tempt us. Among the most common things leading people to temptation are food, alcohol, and other mind-altering drugs, sex, money, collector's items, and the like. There was once a woman, I think I told you about her, uh, she was on the Susie Orman show one time, and she had called in because she was $20,000 in credit card debt, almost all of it from ordering food continually from Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Pretty much any physical thing can cause a problem. However, we need to remember that the problem is not inherent in the thing. The problem is inside of us. So as we continue our life journey this first week of Lent, it would be a good idea to examine our lives in terms of what tempts us. How successful are we are in fighting temptation? And that's the good news that I have for you on this first Sunday of Lent 2014.